Hey, welcome back. Um, I'm about to introduce a new series for, uh, I guess, the channel, uh, which is based around um, an off-grid solution, um, a power solution. And um, yeah, this is a project that I've been waiting for for a long time. Um, and I've done a lot of research over the years uh, during COVID. Um, I purchased uh, some batteries during COVID as well. Um, and uh, set up a couple other little battery packs um, just to get familiar with, uh, I guess, equipment process and um, how to manage uh, lithium ion phosphate batteries. So this one for me is, um, I guess, part hobby as well as um, I always wanted to um, try and, and look at the, a way that we could um, have self-producing power. Um, and you would have seen from the other videos, we've got a, we've got a really big solar system on the shed here, um, and that's feeding into the house, which is, which is awesome. Um, but I guess the other side of it is how, how can we also take some of that power or convert some solar into um, storage as well? Um, and as we all know, at the moment in 2022, um, battery storage is very expensive. Uh, hence why um, I've looked at um, a DIY solution. Um, and you know, it's not for everyone. I'm not connecting the house to this. This will be um, sort of a sideline project in the shed uh, for the meantime. But um, yeah, uh, turning this into reality now is a bit exciting for me. Um, I've always dabbled in electronics and 12 volt, but um, yeah, taking it to the next level now uh, is going to be uh, yeah something I've been looking forward to. So um, I'll be doing a little bit of this work myself, as well as then um, getting someone who's a bit more qualified uh, and certified for the 240 volt side. So stick around. Uh, I'm looking forward to it. Hopefully, you find what I'm doing interesting and. Um, you yeah, we might learn jointly uh, something along the way. So back over to the big battery. So at the moment I am doing what they call top balancing. Um, I don't really need to top balance, but what top balancing involves is um, aligning all the cells in parallel and fully charging them to 3.65 volts. Um, I've actually got two chargers uh, connected to the battery at the moment, trying to pump as much energy into this thing as I can. Uh, and I have a voltmeter here uh, tracking the charging. Um, this is a battery tester, which has been fabulous. Um, I bought this to qualify the cells that I purchased. Those are secondhand cells. They are certainly not new um, from a very infamous battery purchase on the internet. I won't go into that, but um, I was one of the lucky ones and actually got my cells. A lot of people did not. So, um, yay for me finally luck went my way so what we are doing here is we are charging out of two chargers um, this one at the moment is supplying 40 amps uh, trying to get to 3.65 volts uh, and this little um, basically uh, what is a, a server power supply over here that has been modified it's capable of doing uh, 50 amps I've just got it turned down at the moment I'm going to turn it up capable of doing 50 amps uh, so I've basically got a grand total of 90 amps at 3.65 volts going into my cells um, and like I said the aim is to get the voltage here to 3.6 or 3.65 um, at which point those cells are 100% full and um, the aim is to try and get them all uh, at the same state of charge at the very top of their um, their charge uh, capacity so uh, they are all fairly closely um, matched in terms of capacity I, I verified the capacity with the tester here uh, as I have done with all my batteries so um, so they are actually um, sem semi decent batteries uh, even though they are second hand and uh, yeah away we go 
so from there it's um, it's about constructing uh, I guess my own version of the power wall which uh, I'm hoping is going to fit onto uh, this form ply here um, we will need to see how we go and um, uh, that'll involve uh, a few components but including uh, solar charging I've got a solar charger that will charge that bank and um, a few other bits and pieces that have come along so um, stay tuned for that so yes um, I received uh, one of the components today which is uh, Victron Energy um, Power In which is a thousand amp bus bar um, I'm not going to be going anywhere near that in terms of um, amperage but um, it uh, provides a neat convenient solution for uh, connecting um, various loads so I'm actually going to use this as a bus bar um, it's part of the Lynx uh, system but um, it's been modified a little bit and I'll simply be um, using it as a giant bus bar Now, full disclosure, I am a bit of a Victron fanboy. Um, I discovered their products uh, when I refitted, um, we had a camper trailer and I refitted the AGM battery system into that and needed a way to monitor uh, the state of the batteries. Um, and I fitted uh, my first, uh, I fitted a solar controller um, to charge and I also fitted a Victron uh, shunt to monitor the batteries and when I saw how well all that worked together and the technology they had the Bluetooth integration um, I really really started to look closer into their products and um, bang for buck uh, really loved um, just about everything they offered so um, yes my system will be uh, fairly uh, pretty much 100% Victron uh, unashamedly uh, I'm going to say that uh, but yeah, really like their products, quality and at a great uh, cost point. Well, it's the next morning and uh, I've just been, I did some more tinkering last night. Um, I tried to set up our uh, bus bar here, Link's distributor in. Um, assembled the switch uh, to which I have no screws for. There's supposed to be uh, screws here to hold this together, but I don't seem to have received those, so that's a problem. Um, got the Victron uh, Smart Shunt. Um, got the Victron Smart Shunt uh, connected. Uh, so the battery's got to connect to this guy. Negative, positive lead to the um, switch to be able to isolate. Um, and that will be able to be uh, turned. Uh, this will get mounted to the power wall. Uh, still trying to work out where everything's going to go there. And then uh, last night I got a big game and uh, also connected uh, the charge controller up uh, to the Servo GX. So the Servo GX is um, uh, a pretty cool device by Victron, which um, pulls all your system together, allows it to communicate, uh, allows it to be configured, and um, can update the uh, DRM portal with your info, so you can monitor it from uh, the web. Um, and it also supports a uh, the screen to monitor it all. Now I've got a pleasant surprise this morning when I turn this on um, because without any configura configuration by me it's somehow communicating with the the main shed inverter um, so you can see the erroneous inverter there um, is being represented on the Servo GX and uh, yeah, I really have no idea how that's happening. Um, I assume it can just see it on the network. So it just started talking to it and um, away it went. Um, okay, well, I'm on Christmas holidays now um, and I've uh, 
guess what I'm doing at the moment is just um, bench testing the battery pack. Uh, I know it looks like a dog's breakfast, <clears throat> uh, but yeah, at the moment it is a dog's breakfast. But um, what I've been able to do is uh, test the BMS, uh, which is the JK BMS here. Um, 150 amp, 2 amp active balance, which is quite neat. Um, been testing that, getting used to it, um, just seeing how it's balancing the pack. Uh, the battery state is at pretty much at top of charge, um, and I guess I've um, <clears throat> I've just noticed I've got a couple of a uh, couple of uh, runaway cells um, or cells that uh, tend to peak higher than the rest of the pack, um, which. Yeah, at the moment isn't a problem. I guess I'll um, over time I'll I'll work out whether that is a problem or not. Um, but yeah, at the moment just monitoring everything. So uh, other than that, I'm not sure what it'll do to capacity. It might limit capacity a little, um, but I don't think um, it's going to be too much of a concern. Um, yeah. Uh, also getting used to the Serbo GX. Just trying to get it to. Uh, to work and to function. I've uh, been playing around with that. Uh, I'm trying to get a temperature sensor for the one of the batteries uh, working as well for that, but um, haven't had much luck getting that to function. Um, yeah, I've had to sort of try and help the battery pack by discharging a couple of um, couple of uh, cells, those two runaway cells, uh, try and get them down. Uh, but the Active Balancer is actually doing a, a fairly neat job. Um, I know it's hard to see on camera, um, but um, what it's displaying here is the red being the um, being the uh, low, oddly enough, and the blue being the high. Um, so what it does is takes a high state of charge from one cell and distributes it across the pack with the aim of trying to get all the cells the same. Um, so I've disconnected it now from the charger um, and just letting the um, just letting the BMS do its uh, its balance trick. So yeah, we do have some cells sitting at 3.4 and the other cells are sort of uh, at 3.35. So uh, we do have a cell differentiation of um, 93 millivolt. So um, uh, sorry, 0 0.93 volts. So, um, yeah, anyway, just, like I said, just sort of putting everything through its paces before we, um, before we get serious.